The treasure hunts that archaeologists embark on never really end. As soon as an archaeologist finishes work at one location, they'll move on to the next, and then the next, and then the one after that. That means there's a never-ending supply of treasure discoveries to tell you about. This latest collection is as great as all that has come before it. So, let's get started. In September 2021, archaeologists in China were working their way through six recently discovered sacrificial pits at the Shanqingdui Bronze Age archaeological site in Sichuan when they found a bronze artifact that's been described as a sacred tree. The unusual object is thought to be the work of the Shu culture, which existed in this part of China about 3,200 years ago, and is likely to have been responsible for the creation of the pits. The tree is such a complex object that extracting its broken trunk, branches, flowers, and ornaments from the pit took more than a month. The job was made harder by the fact that the tree was deliberately buried under several layers of heavy ivory. The significance or function of the tree is unknown, but very little is known about the Shu people in general. They had no written language that we know of, and the only thing we're really certain of about their culture is that they were sun worshippers. The tree might be connected that belief because trees grow towards the sun, but that's little more than a guess, and in all likelihood, a stretch. Also in September 2021, the owners of a mansion in Plosivet, Brittany, France, decided to have their property renovated. Part of the renovation called for an old barn and a plant nursery to be connected. While working on an interior wall, stonemasons found a metal box embedded within it. When the metal box was opened, it was found to be full of gold coins. Three days later, they came across another bag of gold coins stashed behind a beam on another wall. A total of 239 gold coins were recovered in total, all of which were minted between 1638 and 1692. Most of them are stamped with the face of King Louis XIV, but 23 of them bear the face of his predecessor, Louis XIII. Two of the coins, a Louis d'Or with a Templar cross and a double Louis d'Or with a long lock, are exceptionally rare. The latter coin is one of only 120 examples that are known to exist. While most of the coins have an estimated value of between $600 to $1,000, these two rare coins are more likely to change hands for five-figure sums. The estimated value of the whole collection is in the region of $350,000. Our next discovery comes from October 2021. That month, archaeologists in Ukraine found these beautiful glass pendants close to the town of Kotelva in Poltava Oblast. The team responsible for the discovery was working its way through a Scythian era burial ground on the side of Barvinkova Mountain when it came across the three stunning artifacts, which were probably made around 2,400 years ago. Nothing like them has ever been found in Ukraine before. Having nothing to compare them to means we can't really say what they were used for. It's likely that they're intended to be decorative objects, but the shape is unusual, and the significance, if there's any significance at all, is unknown. The objects have been taken to the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine for further study, so perhaps more information will be available soon. Failing that, the pendants will go to the Bilsky Historical and Cultural Reserve Museum for exhibition once the experts are done looking at them. If the experts can't come up with any answers, perhaps the public will. Although archaeologists abuse the phrase find of a lifetime, it's still worth paying attention when one of them uses it. Let's look at the credentials of this prehistoric golden sun bowl, which was discovered in late September 2021, and described in such terms. The bowl is roughly 3,000 years old, and was discovered near Eibrichsdorf, Austria. It is heavily deformed and fractured, but still has elaborate ornamental inscriptions. It's thought to come from an old Urnfield culture settlement. The object was discovered buried close to a prehistoric dwelling's wall, and is notable for its sun motif pattern, which is assumed to depict the sun's rays. It's also exceedingly fragile, as it's composed of extremely thin sheet metal that has been determined to be 90% gold. 
Only about 30 gold bowls of this type have ever been discovered in Europe, and this is the first to be discovered in Austria. Scientists discovered remnants of organic material inside the bowl, which they believe to be a gold thread sewn fabric, probably a ceremonial scarf worn during sun worshipping rites. The unusual object is currently on its way to a museum in Vienna. Experts in Russia are still studying a collection of ancient and valuable items that were uncovered in the Suzdal Opolye region, not far from the Neroklazminskaya River, in August 2021. Archaeologists have previously identified the remains of an ancient settlement in the area, but thought they'd already found everything there was to find. So the treasure discovery came as a shock. The first signs of the hoard were fragments of jewelry that are thought to have been churned to the surface by agricultural activity. The finding of the jewelry led to a new six-foot-deep, six-foot-wide pit being dug, resulting in the discovery of a metal bowl and ornaments that would once have been part of a woman's clothing. The design is consistent with that of the Volga Finns, who lived in northeastern Russia before the arrival of the Slavs. If the woman's clothing was ever here, it's long since rotted away, but archaeologists were able to recover three bead bracelets and a further 300 beads that were probably once embroidered onto fabric. The strangest of the discoveries is a set of six hollow duck-shaped pendants on a leather cord, the purpose of which is unclear. If someone has the gift of gab, meaning that they're a gifted and persuasive speaker, we might say that they have a silver tongue. Apparently, the ancient Egyptians sometimes went further with that metaphor and made it literal. In December 2021, a trio of Egyptian mummies with gold tongues were discovered inside a Greco-Roman tube in Oxyrhynchus, Egypt. The limestone tomb had been undisturbed since the time of the 26th dynasty 2,500 years ago. Two of the mummies are little more than skeletons, but the third is in such good condition that it still has hair and all of its soft tissues attached. In all three cases, there's a tongue-shaped gold foil leaf where the tongue should be. The Egyptians believed that the dead needed to be able to negotiate their way into the afterlife after they passed away, and so they'd have to be able to speak fluently and persuasively. Perhaps this strange burial practice was a way of helping to ensure that their dead loved ones would be able to do so. A similar burial was found elsewhere in Egypt in February 2021. But other than that, it's a very rare discovery, and we're not totally sure of its meaning. As 2021 came to an end, archaeologists in Morocco were hard at work in Bismun Cave, Morocco. That was nothing new for the experts there. They'd been digging through and exploring the site since 2014. In November, they made their greatest discovery yet. It's a collection of perforated snail shell beads, and they're thought to be the oldest jewelry in the world. Amazingly, these handcrafted pieces of artisan jewelry were created somewhere between 142,000 and 150,000 years ago. There are 33 shells in the chain, all of which are around half an inch long. The edges of the perforations in them are smooth, which is likely a product of them having been rubbed and worn on strings. A few traces of red ochre still cling to a few of the shells, suggesting that some or all of them were painted. Historians aren't sure whether the jewelry would have had a symbolic meaning or whether the person who wore them just wanted to look pretty. If they had a specific meaning, it would indicate that the history of human cognition and communication goes back further than we currently imagine it does. Not every coin discovery story is interesting, but this one is. It's a collection of over 5,500 silver coins that were recently found on a riverbed in Augsburg, Germany. The coins date back 1,800 years to the Roman era. According to Roman coin expert Stefan Kermnicek, the coins are standard-issue Roman denarii and were minted between the 1st and 3rd centuries. The site of the discovery isn't far from what's thought to be the oldest Roman base in the Bavarian region, which was found earlier this year. But the discoveries aren't thought to be connected. 
Experts think that the coins entered the river somewhere else and ended up bunched here after a flood. While the most attention-grabbing emperors printed on the coins are Nero and Septimus Severus, the most valuable are likely to be those which were minted during the time of Didius Julianus. He ruled for just 66 days before being assassinated in the year 193 by one of his own guards. So there wasn't much time for coins to be minted. That makes any discovery connected to him extremely rare. The question of how so many coins came to be in the river will likely forever remain unanswered. Sometimes an archaeological discovery takes time. If we're talking about the largest Anglo-Saxon treasure discovery in the history of the British Isles, the time it takes is 30 years. That's how long it's been between the discovery of the first gold coins that make up this treasure hall and the most recent. It's now been determined that all 131 coins, which have come from the same field in West Norfolk, were buried at the same time and so can be considered part of the same collection. It seems that the coins, which are mostly Frankish tremises, were buried somewhere close to the end of the 6th century. Only 100 such coins had been found in the country's history prior to the announcement of this discovery, so the number of the archaeological record has effectively doubled. A few coins from the Byzantine Empire are also included in the hoard, as are a Bracteate pendant and a gold ingot. Some of the pieces are missing, as David Cockle, an off-duty police officer and amateur metal detectorist, attempted to sell his finds on the black market, rather than declaring them as he should have done. He was fired from his job and went to jail for 16 months for his crime. In December 2021, archaeologists in China confirmed the discovery of a bronze-lidded vessel inside a tomb at the site of Li Lihe, close to Beijing. This is being treated as a significant find, because the vessel is thought to date back to the very foundation of Beijing as a city during the Western Shao Dynasty era 3,000 years ago. To make the vessel even more interesting, it's thought to be a match for another bronze vessel that was found at the site during the 1970s. It seems the decorated food containers were made as a pair. Both vessels bear inscriptions that include a character called Yong, which is a specific reference to the establishment of a new city. During the Western Chao period, bronze vessels were strictly off-limits to anybody who wasn't a member of the ruling class. There were even rules about how many of them a noble person could have in their grave when they died. There's a strong chance that these vessels belong to someone who played a direct role in the creation of Beijing. It's a shame that we don't know their name. The Galloway Hoard is the most valuable Viking treasure ever discovered in Britain. It was discovered in a field in Castle Douglas, Scotland by an amateur metal detectorist in 2014 and is still being meticulously researched item by item. A carved rock crystal jar was painstakingly cleaned and re-examined in December 2021 at a facility operated by National Museums Scotland. That re-examination found it to be Anglo-Saxon, rather than Viking in origin. It's a Roman-style crystal jar from the 8th or 9th century, with the name of an Anglo-Saxon bishop engraved on the base. Bishop Highgold had me made, is what the inscription reads. This raises the possibility that Vikings raided a church in Northumbria and buried their loot with other Viking antiquities. It also implies that the hoard may contain other non-Viking artifacts. One of them, a silver pectoral cross with niello enamel work that is unlike anything else in the world, might be the collection's centerpiece. We've always believed the Vikings created it until now, but we're back to square one with no notion of what's Viking and what isn't. We finish by returning to England, where a golden garnet sword pyramid was recovered from Breckland, Norfolk in August 2021. While the discovery happened in England, the artifacts are most likely from India or Sri Lanka and were manufactured during the 6th or 7th centuries. Rather colorfully, experts think that the artifacts were most likely dropped by a local lord as he traveled across the countryside on horseback. This would have been an extremely irritating loss for the lord if so, as sword pyramids come in pairs. 
Archaeologists have compared it to the annoyance of losing one valuable earring from a pair. Back when the objects were lost, Norfolk was part of the regional kingdom of East Anglia. The presence of the foreign artifacts suggests that the kingdom had trade links with far-off countries, which is something that had never previously been suspected. Sword pyramids like these helped to bind a sword to a scabbard. They would probably have made it harder to draw the sword, so some historians have speculated that they might have been a way of making someone think twice about rapidly pulling a sword out in anger and doing something its owner might later regret. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!